What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Dr. Petty. I'm a first year internal medicine resident in Philadelphia. Today I wanted to share with you my tips and tricks for you assembly step three. So the biggest thing about step three is having a date in place. Um, that's what motivated me to study, um, especially during a, a residency and as an intern, you will be fairly busy. I took my exam um, during December of last year while I was on an inpatient month, so it was fairly stressful. The biggest thing that motivated me is that I already paid for the exam, I had to take it, and I had a date in place. So having that date in place really pushes you to study even when you're in residency. Intern year is a different ball game with and without step three. You're already tired, you're already busy learning how to use the EMR. Um, the, learning the EMR is one thing I would highly recommend. If you're an IMG coming from a different country like me, I studied in India where we had paper charts. I didn't really have much exposure to using the EMR. Learning how to use it here was something that greatly helped me um, study for step three. So when you interact with an EMR, you learn how to admit patients, how to um, schedule them for different tests, how to obtain lab results, how to follow them and look at their morning results every day. And this is similar to how the exam is um, in structured. So next, let's talk about the exam structure. So step three USMLE is a two-day exam. It is different from your other steps, uh, such as step one and CK, where day one is 232 questions. It is six blocks of 35 to 40 questions and 60 minutes per block. It consists of seven hours and a 45 minute break. Day two is 180 questions, 36 blocks, 30 questions per block, but you only have 45 minutes to complete each block. After, the, you, do, after you finish your questions, you also have 13 CCS cases, which range from short cases that are 10 minutes in duration, and you also have longer cases, which are 20 minutes in duration. So what for me, what I found the most difficult was day one. Day one had a lot of step one stuff, a lot of um, basic clinical science, whereas step two or, or day two had more step two CK material. Um, so this is my notebook. Um, I got a five subject notebook. Um, it is um, this, in this notebook I put everything. Everything from my USMLE step three that I did on your world. I labeled it for by chapter. So cardiology, um, nephrology, endocrine, um, and I made uh, whatever questions I did on New World, I would put into this notebook. Whatever questions I found difficult, topics, um, answers to questions. And I would just review this. Whenever I had free time in work, when I came home, every day I spent about an hour just reading through this book. And it, in a way, it served to um, help me reinforce how, what I studied on New World. I didn't get to finish New World. I got through about 1,600 questions. And when you're in residency, it's very difficult to actually finish all the questions, to do multiple passes. Um, I never did that for step one and step two. I always did multiple passes of uh, the question bank, um, just to reinforce the ideas. But for step three, I felt it that you don't have time, number one. It is kind of redundant because you've seen these questions before. It's almost the same topics. So you just studying for the topics and understanding the key idea of what that topic is asking um, is, is, is better for you than trying to redo more and more and more questions. Next, I want to talk about how I study for CCS cases. So for CCS cases, I used UWorld and I used CCScases.com. One of the first things I recommend you do is to watch the Archer USMLE Step 3 video, which is on YouTube. He gives a good introduction on how the system works, how to organize and navigate around the EMR. It is quite difficult because it's nothing like what um, you'll see in Epic. Um, the EMR is, can be quite tricky. So watch as many videos as you can first to orient yourself, how to admit patients, how to order tests, how to follow up on your results, where to look in your H&P, um, where to find your physical exam. Once you do that, start doing ccscases.com. The way I did it was I organized it by high yield. So everything that was high yield, um, I would do those first. I got through about 30 of the CCS cases and I tried to finish about all of the USMLE UWorld cases. Um, so in UWorld, there's two types. There's a simulated case and then there's just the case files. So the case files include um, history and physical, what lab test to order, what are the results, and what you should have done to treat the patient. It is not interactive. There are interactive cases, but they do not grade you on how you proceeded um, in a stepwise fashion. 
ccscases.com actually grades you on how you how long it took for you to order the right test if you ordered the wrong test what you should have done and that I believe is how the real exam is structured the real exam see uh, the cases will account for a, a large proportion approximately 25% of your overall score so I would suggest that you spend your time equally um, amongst cases as well as questions so I'm gonna link below the resources that I use to study for this exam. One of the best resources I found on the internet, um, the 100 CCS tips. So you can find this uh, document on Student Doctor Network on Reddit, multiple tip, multiple sites, but search uh, CCS 100 best tips and you should find it on Google. I will link that below as well as YouTube videos, the Archer U Assembly video, uh, ccscases.com and uh, link for Amboss and various other resources that I used. Um, and I really hope that you all succeed in your step three. Um, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you again.